police officers who have arrested other police officers. What's the story? Story 1. Probationary officer goes on a blind double date with his roommate. Been at the racetrack drinking, so they take the train to downtown. Everyone is pretty drunk, him in particular. Maybe to entertain or show off for his date, he is acting goofy. As everyone is getting off the train, he sees some guy bent over tying his shoes. Rocket scientist decides to leapfrog over the guy, only neither of them have much balance. Probationary cop basically jumps over on the guy and drives his face straight into the pavement because he is too drunk and the guy wasn't expecting it. Everyone jumps up and he starts trying to defuse the situation he just caused. Turns out the guy is a 17-year-old kid heading down to spend the weekend with his grandparents and has two broken teeth and a broken nose. The drunk cop starts saying stuff like, It's okay, it will be fine, I'm a cop, it's all good. When he realizes the crowd isn't going to let him just walk away, he footbills and tries to run off. A few guys chase him down and grab him. Cops get called and detain him. I was the on-call detective who was called out at 22.30 to handle the case. He refused to answer any questions and was booked in for felony battery. Based on the extent of injuries and age of victim, he never made it off probation and resigned. Edit. Since I saw this asked, I figured I would clarify. I wrote up and submitted the packet to the DA for prosecution. Nothing was swept under the rug. Trust me, a guy like this is not wanted on the police department. He was a probationary officer, so it would be easier to terminate him. The case was put through the system by the DA, and he ultimately took a plea deal. A plea deal is very common across the entire spectrum of cases, whether it be a vandalism, theft of a billion dollars, candy charges, or murder. It is probably the most commonly used tool for adjudicating cases. So don't think a plea deal was arranged because he had been a cop. Remember, he was arrested and charged by the same department he was a probationary officer for. Story 2. Not me, but my dad who was a cop. He was still working as a full-time cop before switching full-time to firefighting and made a traffic stop around 11 at night back in the mid-80s. Nicer car, speeding well over the speed limit, so my dad initiates a stop. Before he is out of his cruiser, the driver has what looks like a badge hanging out of the window. My dad walks up, does the usual song and dance, and the driver said, You obviously can't flipping see who I am. My dad says, Yes, Lieutenant Colonel, I do, and right now I'm conducting a traffic stop. Turns out the driver was a LT. Colonel in the Ohio State Highway Patrol, which is pretty high up in their rank structure. My dad again asks him for license and insurance, and the guy goes off. Threatening to call Banana, as in Banana Celeste, who was governor at the time, and threatening his job. That he was just trying to get back to Columbus after an engagement, and so on. Eventually, he calls for backup and has another officer there to witness what was going on. Eventually, my dad writes him a ticket, and while still screaming, Mr. Pulling rank drives away. The next shift, my dad gets called in by his assistant chief and is asked about the stop, and apparently the colonel of OSHP was calling him about it. In the end, they had to bring in the other officer to write a statement of what went on, and in the end, nothing came of it. Except the ticket wasn't contested and paid. Story 3. Not a police officer, but I worked as a contractor for a law enforcement's digital evidence lab. There was a new guy who had just retired as a cop, but came on because he wanted to do computer forensics and supposedly had some background in it. We were in training together, learning about cell phone forensics when he missed a day of training. That night, he was on the news because he had been arrested after cops closed in on him for soliciting texts of pictures from underage girls. We weren't part of the investigation, but did send his work computer over to the lab that was working on it, and he had censored photos on it. Overall, we were all shocked, but also couldn't not chuckle at the irony that he was a Compute 6 forensics analyst who didn't know how to hide evidence on a computer. Story 4 Former police officer and correctional officer here. I never actually arrested a fellow cop myself, however. My field training officer was arrested and fired from my former PD twice for drunken disorderly before I worked there. He got his job back twice through union arbitration and, to his credit, gave up drinking. When I was working at the jail, we had a cop who was put into protective custody suicide watch after being arrested for stalking a woman he met on a call. He got obsessed with her and kept bothering her after the fact, and after she reported him, he made threats against her. A fellow CO at my jail was arrested for producing and distributing child obscene photos. He got girls as young as nine to send him photos, which he distributed on the web. He's doing 25 years in prison minimum. He won't be eligible for parole for another 15 years or so. We had seven officers at the jail beat a disabled inmate and then lie about it on their reports. The shift commander then tried to erase the video. All were fired and arrested, but were later acquitted of all charges. Sad thing was, they were all guilty as hell. Story 5. I actually have had to arrest three separate members of the justice system this year. First, a practicing lawyer and former judge who had been utilizing his position to coerce close relationship from defendants. He utilized this leverage even after he was not a judge anymore, 
Investigation by DCI revealed he had about a dozen victims, so a warrant for his arrest was made, which I executed. Arresting a guy you used to put defendants in front of is a very odd feeling. He weaseled out of prison time and got it all suspended and put on a direct supervision probation program. Absolute horse cow? I've seen guys do way less get way more time, but it's not really a secret that money has a habit of tipping the scales of justice. Next was a prison guard whom strangled his girlfriend, then stalked her relentlessly. I actually arrested him twice because after he posted bail on the first one, he was spotted lurking outside her home only 45 minutes after being released. Has currently in on felony assault, strangulation of a household member, and felony violation of a protection order. He's still in my jail awaiting trial with a bail that has been substantially increased. I'm anticipating prison time for him, but only time will tell. Third was a city police officer. I'm a county deputy sheriff because we received a call from a six-year-old that his dad was in the garage doing sweets and wouldn't come out. Showed up to find four very young kids running around unsupervised. It was a city police officer smoking meth that he had confiscated during a traffic stop and not reported or turned into evidence. DCI took the case from us due to potential conflict of interest and have placed him in another county's jail, and I haven't heard any more about it. Hope he does time too. What kind of unpleasant person leaves his little kids totally alone and unsupervised while they breathe meth? Especially when said person is a stupid cop. Unforgivable in my opinion. But yeah, 2020 has been an asterisk, very asterisk strange year for me. Story 6. I'm from Brazil and I'm not a police officer, but my grandfather was. He was a colonel of the military brigade, Coronel da Polícia Militar em Portuguese. We're from north of Brazil, and in the 1960s, in my state's countryside conflict with Native American people, was very common, my grandfather told me. The titular officer for the city was capturing Timbira people protesting for their land and torturing them. I remember he specifically saying something about kicking tied up people in their backs till they bleed, putting salt on the wounds and stepping on them with military boots. That detail stuck with me. The thing is, my grandfather's grandmother came from this Aldaya, I don't know the right term in English, the same ethnicity, same city, so he had a more sympathetic vision of the Native American people, more than the typical Brazilian police officer from the 60s. He saw what the police force was doing in that city, and when he got called for supervising the conflict, he arrested the guy because he was doing that cow to men, women, and children. The guy was demoted. Some other guy came with the same approach and absolutely nothing changed. That's what my grandfather told me. I don't know if it's true, but it's very plausible in the scenario that I know of Brazil. I'm sorry for the broken English, guys. Edit. Hey guys, thanks for your kindness. Story 7. This was during my time as a United States Marine Corps MP. Never arrested another police officer during my other gigs. Got a phone call from the guy's wife saying he was drunk and refusing to leave the house. Knocked on the front door but found him crying on the porch about his wife leaving him because she wasn't happy anymore. She walked by the porch and motioned for me to come inside through the glass door. She proceeded to show me the red marks on her throat, the hole in the door that he punched through beside her head, and some other evidence that doesn't need to be disclosed. After asking him to come inside and get dressed, he refused to leave with me. I wasn't going to handcuff him in front of his kid, but he decided to take that moment to run from me. He was faster and got away for about five minutes before I found him walking through a playground a couple building over. Caught up to him, he punched me, but was taken into custody after a slight use of force. On the way to the station, he tried to kick out a window in my cruiser and told me I was ruining his life. He ended up getting charged with about seven different charges and was kicked out of the Marines. On his way out, he lied to NCIS and got an investigation opened on me for assault. Investigation was completed thoroughly, and all charges against me were marked as unsubstantiated. But the charges still showed up after I got out and went through a background check for my security clearance. 1010 would do again. My slight inconvenience was totally worth it for him to go down for domestic assault charges. Edit for clarification. The assault charges that he falsified were by him stating that he, quote unquote, heard Greg L. Ekstang assaulted a girl at the Marine Corps ball. Due to a law passed in IIRC 2013, all military close relationship assault allegations have to be investigated by a Title 18 law enforcement agency, outside federal agency. NCIS was the one that took my case and subsequently cleared me. Charges are still found on a background check, even though I was cleared 100%. Story 8. Ex-sheriff's deputy here. One night on shift, I had the great misfortune to overhear on the radio that a small local chief of police, the whole department was only three people, was not answering a radio call. So my shift partner goes out to the call that they were trying to get him to go to. And I make my way to try and locate this chief of police. On my way to the police station thinking maybe he's just asleep on the couch, I see his squad car pulled off onto the side of the road lights going. In that moment, my heart sank. 
My first thought was, oh no, this dude just got terminated on a traffic stop. As I'm walking up to the car in a hurry, I notice that he slumped over. I reached into the open driver's window and grabbed his shoulder to try and put my fingers against his neck to feel if he has a pulse or if his skin is still warm and generally check to see if he is in fact still alive. As I'm doing this, I notice a distinct and strong odor of alcohol as the chief of police wakes up, looks at me, puts the car and drive and pulls away. About that time, another deputy pulls up behind my car and I put out my radio that the chief is driving off. The other deputy, forgetting that we all use a shared frequency, then comes over the radio and says, hey, he should be easy to follow his lights are on. The lights go off. Fast forward to several hours later, command staff is out at the police department, seizing the weapons and evidence that stored within the department. This chief of police shows up with the mayor of the small town and submits himself to a breathalyzer. He barely passes. Fun fact, district attorneys do not like prosecuting chiefs of police, especially when politics are starting to get involved. Unrelated to that, I was let go about two weeks later for calling a suspect in peach hole. Unprofessional conduct. Story 9. Not sure if it counts exactly as asked, but 2009. I've got a background in law enforcement, so as an army officer recovering from combat injuries, I found myself as the operations officer for a post-base DS Department of Emergency Services, which included the MPs and law enforcement for the post-base. My office was across the hall from the actual MP director's office. He stepped in and asked how busy I was. I was busy, but wanted any excuse to get away from the monotonous BS I was working on. So I said, fudge it, what do you need, sir? He was handling a case personally and wanted another officer as witness in documentation and processing. An officer's wife had been convinced to come in by a couple other officers' wives. She was a battered mess. Face was swollen. And even though she had cleaned herself up, she was hard to look at without just getting pissed. Female officers, of course, did the actual inspections and physical documentation but the director was running the investigation himself. He had called the officer in off patrol and confronted him with me present as witness. Dude tried joking off that he had just gotten drunk and a little out of control. Long eight-ish month story shortened. His case was transferred to a civilian police department for her good. Not from reprisals or anything, for benefits. He was convicted of DV, which put him out of the MPs and lost him his ability to own carry a firearm, so he was also discharged from the military, loosing his career. I believe he also served some time in a civilian jail, but not 100% sure. She was granted a divorce and because we sent it to a civilian court and he was not court-martialed, she still got to keep divorced spouse married for over 10 years benefits for her and the kids instead of losing all benefits, which is why it was transferred to a civilian department. I really like that director. He did not tolerate BS from among his officers. Story 10. Saw a true crime video where this police officer terminated his ex-wife because she was trying to divorce him and she had a really nice life insurance. He was struggling hella hard with bills and apparently the crime split the whole police department up. People who thought he was guilty versus people who couldn't believe it and thought he wasn't guilty. In the end, he was caught because he was the only one who had keys to the car she drove and the police found a paper with calculations on it that were how much he would have left over after the life insurance money paid off his debt in his house. Oh, and he was sleeping around with a co-worker, Lowell. Story 11. Not a cop yet. Yes, I know, but this is a hilarious story. The city police department had gotten their first internet computer in the early 2000s, and one of the two female officers was having trouble with the computer. She had spent an hour screaming, hitting and yelling at it before pulling her gun out and shooting the computer. The other female officer, who is my sister's future MIL, had to take her down and arrest her for unlawful use of a service weapon and destruction of municipal property. The charges were dropped because she asked if she could instead quit without her pension and benefits and go to therapy. Now she's been living life as a grandmother and helping kids with anger issues. Another issue, more serious. An officer, same PD, was charged and convicted of unlawfully manufacturing and selling firearms. He was building rifles and pistols and was using a pawn shop to help sell them because they had an FFL, Federal Firearms License, and was forcing the owner to sell him parts for a cheaper price. He was also found to be selling the sweets he took off of people. The police department has taken so many hits from these incidents that the city forces them to have multiple cameras in the cars. All officers have to have body cameras they can't turn off unless they're going to the bathroom, which they have to do in the department. They also can't have their guns directly on them at their desks. They have to be locked in a safe next to their desk to deter them from pulling it out and shooting a computer. I have decided not to work there and to find employment with a department that has a better reputation, which sadly is hard. Edit. I forgot to mention, I added that the officers were female in the story because whenever the other female officer would say she worked at the department, P 
People ask her if she's the one who shot the computer, and she has to explain to them the story. Also, the officer in the second story was male. Sorry I made this post at like 4 a.m. in the morning. My mistake. Story 12. I was the head of the unit dealing with close relationship offenses and child protection. We served a number of police precincts, called a cluster. A young woman was arrested for theft at one of the police stations that resorted under us. Her mother was the complainant. The daughter had a serious substance addiction and had previously stolen from her mother, who gave her a last warning after the second to last time. A substantial, for them, amount of cash had gone missing. And when confronted by her mother, the daughter denied any knowledge of it. So deciding that it was time for tough love, she took her daughter to the police station, opened a case, and had her arrested. Later that evening, the mother discovered that, instead of hiding the money in the inside pocket of the coat which was hanging in her wardrobe, she had inserted the envelope containing the cash into the coat sleeve. In other words, no theft had taken place. She immediately returned to the police station, explained to them what had happened, made a withdrawal statement, and was told her daughter would be released imminently. But that, because the case docket was already with the detectives, only they could release her, and not the unformed police in the charge office. Enter the rotten apple of a detective. Upon hearing that a withdrawal statement had been made, he booked the suspect out of the cells and took her to his office, where he told her that he could make the case go away if she did something nice for him in return. He then talked her into having close relationship with him, following which he had her released from custody. Only upon returning home and hearing her mother's profuse apology did the daughter realize what had happened. Cue the assault complaint, the case docket of which ended with me long story short. We summarily arrested the detective, a seasoned veteran of more than 15 years' service, recovered the used condom in his office, and he was convicted. I don't remember the exact sentence, but it was in excess of 10 years. Edit. I forgot to mention something that really struck me. How quickly the arrested cop became institutionalized. There are certain mannerisms which convicts have which are hard to accurately explain, but easy to spot when you look for them. It's in the way that they walk. The gait is affected by leg iron, so after a while, even when not wearing them, one can spot it when they walk. Especially when in a hurry, there's something identifiable in how they move faster using small steps. I'm not sure I can explain it better, but I was shocked to see that, after only three months in detention awaiting trial, some of the traits were already setting in. Story 13. Not me, but I haven't seen anyone mention the video from a few years ago when the female cop ran down another cruiser that was going way, way over the speed limit and didn't have its lights on or call in anything. I don't recall names, but she saw another cruiser burning down the highway and took off after him. She followed him for a few miles and finally got him to pull over. Once they stopped, she got out and pulled her gun, ordering him to get out over the speaker. He's stupid, but finally got out and she put him on the ground and in the back of her cruiser. The dude had no reason to be going that fast and was doing it just because he was a cop and thought he could. It was national news when it happened, and if I remember correctly, thousands of police departments across the country were doing illegal record checks on her, which goes into a system, but that'll come later. And she was getting death threats in her mail from police officers everywhere. I don't recall what led to the discovery, but she found out about the illegal background checks on her and won a ridiculous amount of lawsuits. I'm going to go look for the article and post it here if I find it. Feel free to link it if someone finds it before me. Story 14 used to work for the police and arrested a few cops. First one was my first shift ever on the beat. I was walking around the city and had a complaint about an abusive guy who was calling women sluts and yelling about how ugly they are. I wasn't too phased. I thought he was probably just a drunk. As we walked over to speak with the guy, he started yelling about how he was in his right, and we all agreed. You can have an opinion, but just keep things quiet. It was a very simple conversation, and after taking his details to issue a ticket, he just snapped. He threw his briefcase at my partner and kicked him in the junk. Well, we had warrant for arrest, so took him down and cuffed him. As we took him down, his glasses broken on his face and cut him up a bit. Nothing major, so we took him back to the holding cell. At this point, he said to me, Did you know I have a 12-inch cock? And my real name is Joe Big Blow. We all had a laugh. I finally got some time to run his name through the system and boom. Asterisk police inspector asterisk. This is one of the highest ranks in Vic Pohl. So being an inspector, I called my boss. She came in and said, Oh, fudge, this guy used to teach at the academy. Then he runs at her and tries to headbutt her. That doesn't go well, and he ends up on the ground with a big lump on his head. Someone gave him a wall to headbutt instead. After a few hours, he sobered up and was sent home. The court case carried on for three years. I've since left the force, and he was fired shortly after that altercation. Story 15. Not a cop, but a former dispatcher who filed a complaint against another dispatcher for jeopardizing public and officer safety. 
this person did not like me and would intentionally withhold information and not enter it into CID causing me on radio to have delays in responding to officer questions. When I finally had enough and reported this person to assistant chief, I was sent home. Two days later, I was fired for abandoning post even though I never left. I called both the chief and the assistant chief out during my termination for this being a case of good old boys and collected my personal belongings. To this day, people ask me all the time, why is it when they call 911 at this particular city they get told hold? My response is usually that dispatcher is most likely finishing their game of Candy Crush first. The thin yellow line, dispatchers, and I hear the thin blue line, cops, are to never be crossed. You're either with them or against them. Edit. I really didn't expect this to get this much attention. To those who say I should report it. At the time, yes, I should have, but I was devastated to lose that job, and my only focus was to find a new job to keep money coming in. At this point, I do not know if the dispatcher is there anymore. I know the admins have changed with retirements and mayoral appointments. There is a group mentality to being a dispatcher or a cop, but by and large, most do the work because they want to serve their communities. Being a dispatcher, even for my short time, was both the hardest and also one of the most rewarding things I've done. There are calls I'll never forget both for the sheer horror of them and also for the absolute insanity they brought forth. Thanks to all who read and upvoted this, and please take a moment to consider that the person on the phone when you call 911 or emergency services rarely gets closure when you call. All too often when we send out the appropriate people, that's the end for us. There are calls that shake you to the core and forever you wonder, did I do everything thing I could and are they okay? Story 16. I'm an actual cop so I'll give an answer. I've arrested 12 cops for DUI, two of which included charges of possessing weapons while intoxicated. I've arrested one cop for writing a check on a closed account, another for violating protection order during a very ugly divorce. I assisted the feds on a couple tax-related arrests. I've also arrested a total of three cops for dereliction of duty. One of those cops was a cop who didn't arrest or conduct a DUI investigation after a crash involving another cop. All those cases proceeded in a similar fashion as other people with similar backgrounds criminal records would have with similar offenses. The slap on the wrist is actually very common and the norm with first-time offenders. Also, the things I found cops arrested for are generally the same things other middle-class blue-collar workers get in trouble for. Issues with substance abuse, particularly alcohol, and financial problems. My career is perfectly fine. I faced absolutely no negative repercussions from any of my peers. I'd say if you work for a large enough agency, you've probably arrested or written a ticket to a cop. Story 17. My story is about how my dad almost got arrested. In Australia, after the Port Arthur shooting, semi-automatic weapons were banned. The police had a buyback system where you could surrender your weapon for reimbursement. My dad was a cop at the time, and he asked his superior officer if he could take the stocks off the rifles, as many of them were valuable types of wood, and he liked wood. He was granted permission and did so. Well, some other cop trying to make a name for himself reported him for stealing semi-automatic weapon parts. My parents weren't allowed to leave the town for months as the proceedings went on, and they were ostracized by their friends and fellow officers. The superior officer denied giving permission to avoid trouble, and Dad was brought before a judge. The judge took one look at the evidence and said, I was told this was about a police officer stealing semi-automatic weapon parts, and this is what we're here for? He was furious about the waste of time and dismissed the case immediately. So I guess the story of how a cop tried to arrest another cop for clout. Story 18. Domestic violence. Not much of a story. Pretty clear cut. Luckily, it was a visiting family, so not someone I knew. Other than that, I once tackled a guy who had been fighting in a bar and threw cuffs on him, only to find out later he was a cop. Should have known when he immediately put his hands behind his back when I told him to do so instead of fighting me as drunks tend to do. Detained but didn't arrest him because I didn't actually see him punch anyone. And disorderly conduct has a lot of discretion involved, and I don't know who started it. Gave both parties the information needed to file charges against the other, and a report was completed. Just a reminder that an arrest is not supposed to be a punishment. Being charged with a crime is the issue. I think DUI is the most common. I never did much traffic enforcement. Story 19. My friend worked as a cop at a local city. He told us a story of how he was nearly arrested by a cop when he was a cop. He and three of his fellow officers were having a night of drunken antics related to a bachelor's party. At one point, while definitely intoxicated, his friend decided it was a good idea to throw a hot dog, covered in mustard and ketchup, at a uniformed officer from a neighboring town. Direct hit to the back of the head. Everyone was silent for a second. Then the officer came over and started angrily talking to them. None of them could keep their composure because, well, the alcohol and the fact that condiments were dripping down this cop's neck as he spoke. Needless to say, they were thrown in the drunk tank but never formally charged. 
Story 20. LAPD off-duty officer pulls up next to a black man and starts racially harassing him car to car. Second guy starts returning the insults. First guy pulls his gun. Second guy pulls his gun and shoots first, terminating the first guy. Second guy was LAPD also, undercover and also off-duty. Also LA. Count sheriffs were notorious for seriously abusing prisoners in the jails. FBI finally decides to do an investigation and inserts an informant into the jail system. Sheriff's deputies figure it out and disappear the prisoner into the vast gulag that is the L.A. prison system. And two senior deputies go to the house of the FBI supervisory special agent in charge of the whole investigation and tell her to back off or else. She doesn't back off. Investigation found a lot of crime and corruption by LACS, such that the actual Los Angeles Count Sheriff, Lee Baca, ended up in prison for a long term, such that he will probably pass away there. He appealed to be freed because reasons, and the judge said, NFW, you serve the whole term, and if you pass away inside, too bad. Story 21. Former U.S. Army military police officer. I never arrested another MP, but I myself was arrested by an MP in a different unit on the same post. Long story short, I just bought a Jeep, and after PT one morning, me and my buddies went for a ride back on the range roads at J.B. Lewis McCord. My platoon was on graveyard shift, so we had the day to ourselves after PT. Anyway, so my buddies and I are hauling Peach about 55 miles per hour down a tank trail, which civilian vehicles are not permitted on, when I come across a hardball, pavement, around a hard curve. I was going too fast to try and stop before the intersection, so I sailed through it, and just as I did, an MP unit, on duty, was on the hardball and nearly T-boned me. I immediately stopped. The MP driving jumped out of the car, ordered me out of mine, handcuffed me, and put me in the back of his car. After he got everyone's ID and cooled off from nearly being involved in a serious accident, he came to the back of the car to question me, which went like this. MP. What unit are you in? Me. 704th MP MP. What are you, a mechanic or... Me. No, I'm an MP. MP. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? UTF? Me. Yep, I'm an idiot. Pretty embarrassing. MP. Damn it! slams the door. After about 10 minutes of him hawing with his partner on what to do with me, they decided to take me directly to my first sergeant, and so he did, and flipping walked me all the way to her office in handcuffs for the entire unit to see. At like 9, 10 a.m., he gave me a bunch of tickets and turned me loose to her. Those tickets are still part of my federal record. I did a FOIA request on myself several years ago from DOD, and those were some one of the documents they sent me copies of. It's the one and only time I've ever been arrested, and it was by a fellow cop. Lol. Story 22. In my shortish time in law enforcement, I never arrested another cop, although I did arrest correction officers, both for domestic violence-related incidents. But I did have several officers I knew well who arrested officers from our agency, and even worked with a couple guys who ended up getting arrested. I only knew of one guy catching flack for arresting a fellow officer. The officer arrested was extremely well-liked, and the offense was pretty iffy, the kind of thing you wouldn't typically arrest a random person for. However, it came out later that it was just the tip of the iceberg. Most cops I discuss these matters with really have no issue with you if you arrest another cop for legitimate reasons. Professional courtesy is definitely a thing. An officer will likely get the benefit of the doubt. If you commit a borderline act, an officer is likely to turn their head the other way. It's called officer discretion, and most officers will do the same for nurses, teachers, other first responders, or just someone who is kind. But if you have legitimately screwed up, you are most likely going to jail. The cops exist that will do everything they can not to arrest a fellow cop, but they are definitely rarer than the public thinks. Story 23. My dad was a cop. At the time, my parents were going through a divorce, and my mother had a new boyfriend of about four months. Boyfriend was a jerk, hit my mom, told my sister if she didn't have a job he had to move out. I fought the guy a couple times myself as I was in middle school, and pretty big, never got crazy serious or anything. Well, my dad hears about all of this and tells boyfriend he better not hurt or threaten anybody in his family ever again, including my mom. Boyfriend goes crazy and starts cursing at my dad, calling him all sorts of names, including the N-word. Skip forward a few weeks and my dad gets a call from my sister that the boyfriend is threatening to kick her out of my mom's house if she doesn't get a job soon. Sister is 16, by the way. So dad goes over to pick my sister up. Here's where it gets interesting. My dad a trained cop who's a part of the SWAT team, was a running back in college, benches more than 405 at the time at 230 pounds 6 foot 2, sees the guy, and the guy just books it. It's one of those animal instinct things where mom's boyfriend knows he messed with the kids, so he starts running, and this only infuriates my dad. Dude runs out the back door into the alley, and my dad chases him, catches him about four houses down, and just pounds into him no mercy until my mom throws herself between them to stop my dad. 
My dad knew he should not have let his emotions get the best of him. He called the cops on himself and cops came and arrested him. Dad lost his badge and everything. Dad was let free same night and two days later gets a call from his lieutenant and they talk for a while about the situation. A couple more days go by and dad gets a call back telling him he needs to come pick his badge back up and gets his job back. Funniest part is, mom's boyfriend then hears about this and tries to sue my dad. Judge decides my dad was defending his family and is only required to pay for the broken glasses. Didn't even have to pay the hospital bills. Mom broke up with boyfriend a couple weeks later. Story 24? Knew a cop who was a real active guy, friendly and helpful to the community at large. Anyway, he left state police for county sheriff and started down a wrong path. So much so that his fellow officers ran a sting on him with city police and busted him for selling license plate driver's ID information to some of the local gang leaders. I guess the gang leaders didn't like him either because they tipped off the cops about this dude before the cops had fully gathered enough evidence to go after him themselves. I'm not sure if he's still in prison or not, but he definitely got time there. And I believe his quote, when he realized he was stung, was, You can take the hood out of the boy, but you can't take the boy out of the hood. Story 25. I have many stories. My dad did internal affairs. Not his choice, which I'm sure many aren't. But if anyone is interested, I could type out a couple scenarios that he was a part of. Edit. Adding the story here so people can enjoy. They ran what they called integrity tests on suspected officers from other officers letting them know, breaking the law and abusing the badge. In one such case, they put an undercover office, he was a black officer, in a nice car from impound, had him drive normal down a highway the suspected cop was patrolling. They would put sweets or a bag of money under the driver's seat. There are cameras and microphones placed throughout the vehicle. Upon pulling the UC officer over, they would have him exit the vehicle and search it. Once they found sweets or money, they would take a bunch and stuff it into their vest and then tell him they found nothing and he could continue on his way. In most cases, this was thousands and thousands of dollars and or lots of sweets. They allow the officer to finish his shift and before he gets home, he is arrested and interrogated. They offer him a choice. Be fired and keep your pension if he can also tell them other officers who do the same thing, because some crowds roll together. Or not say anything and be fired. No pension and possibly jailed. Either way, never be an officer again. If they honestly didn't know anyone, still lose pension. So that's one. Story 26. I arrested my former FTO, who had since left for another agency, for domestic assault. He moonlighted as a bouncer at an adjacent town's dive bar. Most agencies have stringent policies in place against this now. However, not back then. Long story short, he got drunk after the club shut down, drove home, then proceeded to beat the cow out of a vexed wife. I got there and he immediately tried to downplay it. EMS had to transport her to the local hospital where she was treated for a fractured orbital, etc. Gave him the, you shouldn't have put me in this position speech and took his peach to jail. Wifey later attempted to drop the charges and an ex parte op she had signed only to be disappointed by the DA. Story 27. Not a police officer, but similar story. My dad was diagnosed with stage 4 lymphoma. After his final round of chemo, he was in rough shape and on a feeding tube. I moved up to NC in order to help him out for a few weeks and take care of him. He wasn't permitted to drive, and he could barely even walk. He was in such rough shape, sleeping about 23 hours a day. One morning, I had to wake up early for his doctor's appointment. It's about 6.30 a.m., and I'm laying in bed while I hear a massive boom outside of his apartment complex. While I'm contemplating what happened, the noise happened a second time. I look outside the window, which has a direct view of the road. My dad's truck is all crooked in the parking spot, and I immediately get nervous. I quickly go check on him, and to my surprise, he's not in his bed. I run out to the living room and find him sleeping on his sofa. I quickly wake him up and start yelling at him, asking if he drove his truck. He couldn't remember, so we both immediately run outside and find multiple vehicles completely annihilated. Keep in mind his apartment complex runs on a loop, and there's one main road to get you through the whole place, and everyone parks on that main road. As we're outside, someone shouts, He's up by the clubhouse, which is like 100 away whiteys away from us. My dad can barely walk, no shoes on. We're both in our PJs, yet he scurries around to his pickup and finds his truck completely smashed all around his tailgate. Another truck nearby completely had his front end pushed in. We were all surprised because these are full-size trucks and it's hard to do damage like that to a truck. We end up walking up to the clubhouse where a severely drunk man is trying to buy a soda in the vending machine. We call the police, they show up, and we eventually find out there's three more cars completely destroyed one complex ahead of ours. Turns out he was incredibly drunk and high on candy. Once the cops come, they wouldn't arrest him at first, so we started asking questions and it turned out he was the captain of that local police force. They had to wait for the highway patrol to come arrest him. It was a crazy day and there's even more to the story after the accident. If this blows up, I'll post pictures and such for the proof and to show you the damage he did. 
Edit. We'll post tonight when I get off work. Story 28. Not me, but my dad. He was a patrol officer for 17 years till he was harassed by members of the good old boy system to the point of leaving. He was approached by a woman who said she was pulled over for an OE. The cop let her go if she slept with him. This guy assaulted over 15 women. I bet a lot more, but they didn't want to come forward. After my father turned him in, the higher-ups tried to cover it up, but he brought it to the DA who actually did something. The guy was tried a few counties over and was only put on one-year probation. My father was shunned for tuning in a brother, and the local PD is still full of abusive assholes. Story 29? Not me, but my uncle, who's a cop in rural Louisiana, told me about a time when he and his partner got drunk on a quiet night and had a real-life family guy scene. When it was time to go home, they got up, and before my uncle's partner got in the car, my uncle told him he was under arrest for DUI or something of the sort. Like I said, they were both drunk. Well, anyway, my uncle handcuffed his partner behind the back and handcuffed the handcuffs to the railing of the area where you stop to eat lunch out in the middle of obscene photos nowhere. Then my uncle, equally drunk as him, felt like he'd solved the problem and drove home, leaving his drunk partner handcuffed to a pole at night in the middle of nowhere. Then, when he didn't come home, the guy's wife called the police and the police called my uncle. But he was passed out drunk, so the rest of the small town police officers went out looking for the two. Two deputies found his partner asleep next to the pole, and the sheriff found my uncle asleep in his underwear on the couch at his house. Needless to say, both of them almost lost their jobs. Story 30. When my cousin was hired on at the sheriff's office, he was assigned a mentor to help him get up to speed on the job. The mentor was a well-respected sergeant. About a month or two into his training, the sheriff had my cousin come into his office to give him a new assignment. The assignment was to investigate his mentor without his mentor knowing he was doing so. The instructions the sheriff gave him were kind of vague on purpose. Since he was still new at the job, my cousin didn't think anything of the situation and thought it was just a training exercise. After about two months of investigating and doing what he thought he was supposed to do, the sheriff called him in for an update. He asked what he'd learned. My cousin thought this was a test to see how he was doing on the job, and so he presented the sheriff with what he'd learned. The sheriff's reaction wasn't what my cousin was expecting. The sheriff was both disappointed and pleased. With the sheriff reacting the way he did, my cousin thought he'd screwed up and did something wrong. It was in this meeting that the sheriff informed my cousin that what he'd been doing was a legitimate investigation and that, yes, it was a sort of test to see what kind of deputy he'd be. But it was more about having someone impartial or without bias investigate so that there'd be no chance someone would overlook things on purpose and let the guy being investigated get away with it. The sheriff was very pleaded with the job my cousin had done but disappointed that the sergeant was doing what he'd suspected. The guy being investigated was due to retire in a year. However, there were complaints filed against him and discrepancies in some of his reports. Turns out he was using civil forfeiture as a way to steal people's things and then selling them on Facebook Marketplace when he thought he was in their clear. My cousin's investigation led to the sergeant being fired, charged, and sent to jail. Story 31. I used to be the supervisor for hostage negotiation team. Our offices were together with the SWAT teams, so almost all of our call-outs were together working as one big joint unit. Everyone is used to getting called at all hours of the day and night. So, one night I get this call from my lieutenant at 0300 in the morning to be downtown at the main headquarters as soon as I could. No more details than that, even when I pressed for more info. So of course one's mind really starts to wonder, what the did I do? is what starts going through your mind on the drive down. Once in the roll call room, I meet up with the other SWAT officers and supervisors. Same thing. What do you think we all did? One guy says, we just asked for take-home vehicles. I bet it is the brass showing us that they can get us out of bed in the middle of the night to chew everyone out just for asking. After a couple of minutes, in walks all the top brass along with several FBI agents. The briefing was that six officers and one sergeant had been escorting and protecting shipments of candy through the city. It was an undercover operation with an undercover FBI agent and fake loads of dope. Also, they were paid several hundred dollars. The sergeant was paid $24,000 for setting it all up. He was the brains, or lack of, behind it all. So we were to break up into six teams of a sergeant, two SWAT officers, and two FBI agents, each taking a substation, precinct house. All these officers worked the daylight shift, so we were to make the arrest hopefully just before roll call when they could possibly be alone and outgunned. The whole time I am thinking to myself, this is nonsense. There is no way that six guys could get together and pull this kind of thing off. Most of them were idiots. So seriously, this being nonsense just keeps going on in my head. Luckily, our target came to work early that morning as we were set up with the SWAT officers on surveillance in the parking lot and myself with the FBI inside. The target officer walks in with his gun belt around his shoulder and the signal was given to take him into custody. It was a pretty smooth arrest without any problems. I said, Manuel, 
these guys want to speak with you. After, they tell him he's under arrest and read him his rights. All he says is, okay. At that point, I realized it wasn't nonsense. They all pleaded guilty to a couple of years in federal prison, except one who fought it and ended up with seven years. Story 32. In the 1980s, I was a detective in Cape Town. One day while driving in Woodstock, we saw a group of people chasing a man, so we assisted. Turned out he was suspected of stealing from a passenger in a third-class train carriage. Those are very crowded with many passengers standing close together. In his pocket, he had a pay envelope from a local fish packing place containing no money but a piece of carton in which was written, Ha ha, lecker gavang. Afrikaans for LOL caught you good. The people giving chase insisted that he had pickpocketed someone on the train and jumped out at Woodstock Station. Long story short, we traced the owner of the pay envelope by his name and employee number were on TB envelope, who said that after being pickpocketed twice before and losing a week's wages, he hid his money in his sock and made a decoy with the top of a pack of 30 cigarettes on which he wrote the Afrikaans taunt. TB culprit was convicted of theft of an envelope valued at 15 cents and ended up with a criminal record. Can't recall what the sentence was, unfortunately. Story 33. Not me, but when my husband was arrested. He was out on his boat fishing and forgot his life jacket in the truck. Game warden wrote him a ticket, told him he didn't have to appear in court, and to come to the courthouse on the date listed to pay the ticket. Cool. No big deal. The day came for my husband to pay the ticket. He was in the area for work, so he figured he would pop in instead of driving back out there. About 45-minute drive. He went in to pay the ticket, gave it to the girl so she could process it, and she said, You can't pay this. There is a warrant out for your arrest. My husband was extremely confused, and no one would say anything to him about what was going on. A 60-year-old sheriff came over and handcuffed him. While the sheriff was walking him across the road to the jail, he finally explained it to my husband. There was a warrant out because he failed to appear in court. Remember, the game warden said he didn't have to appear in court and even checked on the ticket that he did not have to appear. My husband told the sheriff that, and the sheriff knew. He also knew this particular game warden. According to the sheriff, this was not the first time this had happened. I ended up bailing him out and he was on probation for a year.